ओम सहना वबतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर करवा वह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु माँ विदिषा वह ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम वसुदेव सुत देव कंस चाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु so we are at um, chapter 7 we'll be doing verse 4 today where krishna bhagwan starts talking about his nature higher and lower nature but just to very quickly summarize the first three verses that he began the chapter uh, by telling arjuna that i'll give you this knowledge um this gyan vigyan and uh, so you will be able to understand uh, who i am नो मी कम्प्लीटली तत्व से मुझे जान सकोगे विदाउट एनी डाउट एंड बट बट द कंडीशन यू हैव टू लिसन टू मी एंड यू हैव टू बी अटैच टू मी यू नो एंड एंड वी वेंट थ्रू दोज थ्री डिफरेंट थिंग्स एंड कैन आ बी इन द स्टेट ऑफ मेडिटेशन और कीप योर माइंड काम बेसिकली एंड टोटली बी डिपेंड ऑन ऑन मी मद आश्रय एंड देन आई विल रिवील यू दिस नॉलेज एज वेल एज द विजडम एंड वट डज विजडम मीनिंग द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द ट्रूथ so and uh, basically having known which nothing more remains to be known that's the main thing about this knowledge and uh, so th- even though this is a very wonderful knowledge experience and the ultimate state but very few people firstly walk this path uh, out of millions and millions of human beings very few walk in this path and then rare few gain this enlightenment you know the final mystic experience of oneness with this divinity so and and that person comes to know god and i i mean god and that person is the same we have gone through it all the different aspects of it so um and why there it is it, it is so rare because even if somebody walks that path you, there are a lot of other factors you know you need a proper guidance proper teacher and even after that your own effort your own shraddha so many all other things are there that's why so anyway after advertising this knowledge you know how special it is uh, and and god arjuna all excited about it so he bhagwan starts revealing his identity so these next two verses are kind of related to each other 4 and 5 and together that 4 and 5 he tells about is his nature and there are two terms that we have to get uh, familiar with over here uh, it's called para and apara we must have heard this para and apara prakriti so the apara prakriti is is what he's going to be talking about in verse 4 right now and the para prakriti he will talk about in the verse 5 and then what is uh, just to give a b- very basic idea apara prakriti is the matter and para prakriti is going to be the consciousness so with that background i'm going to res- um, chant this verse 4 भूमिरापो नलो वायु खमनो बुद्धिरे अहंकार मे भिन्ना प्रकृति अष्टधा भूमि इज अर्थ आप इज मीन्स वाटर अनल मीन्स फायर वायु इज एयर खम इज एथर मीन्स स्काय और एक्चुअली स्पेस दस दस अ गुड वर्ड टू mana is mind buddhi intellect eva even cha is an ahankara is ego egoism iti das iyam this me is mind prakriti is nature bhinna and bhinna word has a little more deeper meaning divided over here i said we will see what it means ashtada is eight fold okay, so what is he saying over here so bhagwan is revealing is he called is ashtadha prakriti eight fold prakriti eight different parts of it and sometimes you know it gets further divided also but this is the main you know division and then in sometimes they call it 24 and you will see that how there you know just little more classification that's all but the basic is these eight and we'll see what these eight are 
so this is made up of the five elements and we have talked about this five elements so many times so everybody knows so you know bhumi if we know it's earth upper water anal is fire vayu air and kham is space so these are sanskrit words but we know those five elements very well now and then so the bhinna word so basically bhinna also means that hey it's divided into this eight things but they are here when they talk about these five elements they are in the tan matra state okay means subtle state and sukshma avastha so um it's so it's not a grossified five elements that we experience that's not what they're talking about at this stage but we also should understand that this is a first it comes in the in the subtle form and then it, and this subtle form becomes the cause for the whole world so so bhagwan will uh, uh mention further that para and up para prakriti they come together to cause this whole universe to to emerge so that's the main thing that by itself this eight prakriti cannot do anything by itself consciousness doesn't uh you know do anything because it is just a witness but together this whole universe is created so those are the thing um it they do so um these five elements are they are when they come into uh, further grossification or manifestation i should say then they are become our sense organs so our sense organs are directly related to these elements or we can say that the sense organs come from this five elements and what is the connection that uh, the sound and uh, these what are these five things firstly we already know we have talked to many times sound touch form means to see a sight taste and smell so these are our five indriyas so how is this connected with these five element the space is is uh, connected with sound so the essence of space is sound that's how they 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 describe it and the essence of air is touch the essence of fire is sight and the essence of water is taste and the essence of earth is smell so how do we talk in the modern language what does it mean in the modern language so nikhil anand ji came up with a very nice example he's saying that the subtle form is something like what we have a blueprint of a state suppose if you want to build something the first you have a blueprint and then you go accordingly right further gets into um the more grossified form solid form so the what they are talking about this five elements at at this blueprint uh stage and um so this blueprint they are talking about is the entire cosmos not just the earth or anything but the entire cosmos um and what does another meaning of this sukshma avastha subtle form that they are right now in or not the way he is talking about right now meaning what krishna bhagwan is mentioning that at that stage it is beyond our comprehension because it is in the sukshma form it's like when you see a blueprint it's just a print you don't see actually the building yet but it is going to come because of that that's how we have to see so and then the other three things are mana buddhi and ahankar so you know this is a little bit maybe confusing but in vedanta they put this mana buddhi ahankar all three in the matter category only so you know because sometimes people get confused that because it you you go mind and intellect they are they are antakaran and we don't see them like that we just know it is there some people put it in the consciousness category no Consci- actually look at it the other way anything other than consciousness is all these things so these things are also other than consciousness the mana buddhi and ahankar so what does it mean that and we have done because we have done kathopanishad we will understand this little better now that at cosmic level remember we talked about the total intelligence so where he is talking about you know mana buddhi ahankar so now think of that total intelligence that's what he's referring to at the you know macro cosmic level and then microcosm of course it is our own intelligence that comes from there so and then the buddhi and ahankar you know all that put together kind of the seed form is called that avyakta do you remember the word avyakta from 
फ्रॉम एंड इस कॉल प्रकृति ऑल्सो बोला गया उसको तो इट्स वन ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ गॉड अनमैनिफेस्ट फॉर्म एंड सो फ्रॉम दैट परस्पेक्टिव नाउ थिंक अबाउट इट दिस सटल फाइव एलिमेंट्स टूगेदर विद इंटेलिजेंस एंड मन बुद्धि अहंकार दिस कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द अष्टदा प्रकृति बिकॉज देर आर एट इन नंबर दिस डिफरेंट थिंग्स एंड just like i said that this ashtada prakriti is the one which is which is the object it is experienced different than i because somebody say hey my mind is, is is it different yes it is different because that's why we know hey i'm sad or i am happy we are watching our mind to to speak or i got this idea or i'm watching my intellect see that i'm saying i, I also become the witness of my own intellect So that's why it's other than I. It's a little complicated, but I'm trying my best to explain it. So now talk, think about macrocosm and microcosm. So the same kind of process, which happens in in at at a uh, you know cosmic level, also happens at an individual level. How does it happen? See, when we go to deep sleep, then it becomes avyakt, unmanifest in the seed form, and when when we wake up, as though our intelligence wakes up. like compare it to the total intelligence the individual intelligence because okay now i can comprehend everything you know and then we know that that uh, at the cosmic level is called the hiranya garbha also right that total intelligence so all that is connected with the individual level also if you if you compare it you will see the same process is happening here also because i become conscious of everything aware of everything and then i do my daily activities so now you know just one more angle over here that that at a cosmic level the unmanifest nature of god is there and uh the first manifestation manifestation that happens is that total mind i'm just repeating certain things and seeing how it whole thing sequence comes along and then at that level i know that sometimes when we use the word ahankar we always think of it as something negative right the person is very egotistic or ahankar but yahan par wo ahankar ka meaning thoda different hai okay and let's see well i'll try to explain so when you say that that you know mind of god the total mind of god that is the sense of i ahankar at that level and the god says as though okay this is just like a dramatization of this whole thing as though god says i am and i want to become many Okay, because it's one, right? And it's like there is a joke about it. The god was getting bored, and he said, "You know, I gotta experience many. But I want to play some game. That's why he created. I don't know, just something that sometimes. Hey, why this world came along? Some people give that kind of answer. So then, as though Bhagwan gets divided himself into many, and and he these five elements come about, but. in vedanta there is a very specific thing that the space comes first you know there is a whole sequence and after space the air comes after air fire after water earth sorry uh, after fire water and after water earth that is the sequence and it's called panchikaran some day when we do some other upanishad they will tell you exactly because in the earth the other four elements are there also and in water other three are there like that it is there okay and somebody says hey how can there be fire in the water you know h2o oxygen is there so <laughs> science proves it you know that is there the fire is there see it goes to absolutely together with the science so uh, now you know nikhilanand ji came up with a very amazing comparison about science and and vedant okay so whoever is interested in all the scientific thing it's a simple thing even if you have not heard you will relate to it so he was just saying okay let's look at it from the science perspective that hey you know we live on this earth we know, and now we know that earth is part of a part of a solar system right there are you know nine planets or some now they think that pluto is not a planet eight planets which is whatever way you look at it that's a solar system of one sun which is like a star only right and then in our galaxy there are 100 billion stars we are part of this galaxy right and then some of the stars are bigger than much much bigger than our own star we all know we are about these things and then it it seems that they are finding out that now there are clusters of galaxy they hang out together 
like a family of galaxy and they they interact with each other these galaxies which we have pata nahi have we, we can't comprehend but this all these uh, space scientists they they come up with all these things okay with their own research and all that so he's saying that just think about it that this universe and then we know that such clusters of galaxies are in billions so you know your mind only goes crazy when you start thinking about it in short the universe that we are sitting in is very vast that's what the basic idea is but he said that what they have come up with some numbers now that the matter that we are experiencing of of, of this entire thing you know matter means something that we can comprehend we can kind of grasp with our five senses okay we we can perceive it's only 4.4% of the universe that's what the scientists are saying so and what is the other thing so 25.6% is dark matter you must have heard this this term dark matter which is unknown but is there they have proven its existence but you can't see it so the unmanifest ho gaya ki nahi and then what is the other 70% because ye if you add this 25.6 and 4.4 that's 30% what is the other 70% dark energy they call it dark energy so it's a unmanifest form all these things so together this whole thing is a universe and then they are also saying that these this currently they they say that the universe is expanding but it's a very strange phenomenon on one hand is expanding on the other hand they say the andromeda and our milky way is merging with each other it will take some billions of years we don't need to worry about it there's no there could be no crash or anything they said the stars are still going to be far apart but all this phenomena is going on all this action is going on in the cosmic level but according to the scientists at one time all of this was together right they call it like in that big bang theory they call it the singularity what was in the singularity there was no matter there was no time and so what the vedanta language they use you know no space no time no causality do you remember that that you know time and space go together and no causality means you know uh, no cause was there and then from there the big bang happened according to them so they have their own theory but it it matches right that hey uh, um from that uh, the whole universe expanded so we can look at it as the avyakt what they call it you know so it matches with with the whole thing that at one time you know the time space causality is not there at, at that level it is avyakt and then it comes into manifestation so um when first it comes out this manifestation that's when the sense of i comes and what in the in the puranas it is very nicely described this whole process that you know bhagwan decided okay let me create this world now unki ichha hui aise bolte hain ha huh? because but they are trying to verbalize now this whole process in a story form maybe you know so so this is where called the i consciousness or ahankar so when i was saying the ahankar is not necessarily always a bad thing because here they are talking about that i feeling that hey i want to create something so the first manifestation that came out was space now remember space is connected with sound so that's why that word om that om was is a beginning and the end and because om is the sound and now even in they feel like if you hear the deep space it sounds like om they say because it's that the nature of sound and in some of the scriptures and i confirmed it i went there and i looked at this uh, you know christianity what they say they say that the the word was with the god first and then it manifested that's how the christian said is exactly the same because in our our sanatan dharma they said the sound is that came first you know that's why shravanam is also the that important so um and then the sequence started what i told you that sequence of you know so this is how in nutshell this ashtada prakriti is lower prakriti it's called apara prakriti all these are same and then in in the modern language we we can you call it matter world of matter is ashtada prakriti right? and uh, and then in the next one verse he's going to talk about that that there is a different than this is going to be his para prakriti which is like a witness 
or seer and this apara prakriti is also called jada or uh, gross bolte na jisko english mein jada uh, sanskrit mein word hai thos and then isko drushya bhi bolte hain drushta and drushya that you know hey something that can be seen so these both prakriti belong to god only so basically if you see it the reverse way a brahma exists with these two prakritis and they eventually manifest you know so this is what in this verse is telling it's i hope it's not very complicated but any comment or question or anybody want to add anything i had um i had read this uh, right before class this uh, verse 4 mm-hmm. and it really didn't make much sense to me but after your explanation i think it is i think i und- i understand much more I that's great that's great fully, mm-hmm. but i understand i think i have a better idea I that was a, yeah. yeah that is that's a whole idea about so you know when you bring uh two three different swami's commentary then you know they they bring out different angles i like the way nikhilanand ji compared it to the the science you know and then uh, you know i had uh, i know that you went to the christian school uh, mira ji so you might know i had heard vaguely about you know that the word was with god and then it it manifested i said you know it, the truth has to be same in all the religion but how people interpret but you know the interpretation was so different on the on the internet it was more like or oh, the word means jesus christ but but here they are going at elemental level you know a scientific level and then it it matches so maybe when uh, jesus said that or whatever uh, in there that's what he meant because it matches so beautifully that that's the first thing that manifested you know so we can uh, uh, kind of compare different things and you come to the same conclusion that that was very interesting for me yeah okay meera ji today would you like to read i could yes okay. earth water fire air space intellect egoism or my eightfold prakriti in an attempt to explain the world outside as a marriage between matter and spirit great thinkers of the vedika period had exhausted their philosophical acumen and had given us the sankhya philosophy according to them the spiritual factor presiding over a given matter envelopment dynamizes the inert matter and makes the insentient mixture of various elements of matter mineral assembly to act as though it is intelligent and vital this idea becomes clear to us when we take an example from the modern world so here you know when he Which, was talk- sorry uh, is it the yahan par paragraph khatam nahi hua ha khatam ho gaya sorry so i just wanted to say ki they the, sometimes you know the language they use you may get a little confused at hey, marriage between matter and spirit because remember i said that consciousness by itself does cannot manifest the world so that the god as though got divided into two spirit and matter and the marriage between the two they say and that's why there is a shiv and shakti they call it you've, you've heard of that and then we we celebrate shivaratri which is a marriage of um shiva and and parvati but symbolically it's a manifestation of the universe because you need both okay yeah you need you need it's something like this uh, that you have a electrical equipment yeah. without electricity it's absolutely useless no matter how great my computer can function if i don't have electricity flowing through it it's not going to work but electric electricity by itself cannot do anything either because there's no expression right so to gather that is a manifestation happen now i can do zoom i can talk to you everything you see that so now I'll compare that to consciousness and matter the combination of the two creates this whole universe that's what they mean by the marriage that's that's one thing and then the other thing is 
spiritual factor purusha remember the word purusha came in in this uh, kathopanishad i was saying purusha doesn't mean man over there purusha means that consciousness you know so purusha presiding over a given given matter and and love uh, meant uh, dynamizes the inert matter because just like our body what is death that connection with the consciousness is broken so the i'm person is not alive anymore all the equipments are still there sometime you know some young person may die in accident or something it looks like hey everything is there why is this person is alive but the connection is broken you know so that's how we have to look at it and then in the next uh, paragraph he's going to give another worldly example that will understand this connection between consciousness and matter you know when steel and iron the manufacturer completes a steam engine and when the cold engine is harnessed to steam at high pressure it does work steam by itself can never express its dynamic capacity and strength on the other hand when it is made to work through a given equipment it is capable of adding movement and motion to the inert iron assemblage so then this is also very good example right you have this all this uh, engine is there until you put steam in there it's not going to move so now that steam is compared to consciousness and steam engine is the matter the ashtada prakriti so that's how it is it, they, they are not perfect example but pretty good one to make us understand you know the connection between the two hmm. similarly one of the schools of philosophy in india tries to explain scientifically how the eternal and the perfect self comes to express itself as the world of plurality in the embrace of matter this also explains the relationship between spirit and matter the technical terms used in the philosophy for the two items are prakriti for the matter envelopments and purusha for the spirit factor so now is that that you know the same eternal factor when it expresses through uh this matter it becomes the world of plurality it's the same thing like electricity is the same but their bulbs or equipments a 100000 millions and somebody was saying you can't say that uh chinese electricity or indian electricity or something. they are at the at the very core level it's electricity is electricity right so same way you know the consciousness is one but the the matter it can the three gunas make you know millions of different combinations and all that that we know in the in the world that happens and then these two words purush and prakriti is used even in bhagavad gita and uh, other upanishads and in, later on in the chapters also it's going to come you know here chapter 8 arjun is going to ask this question can you explain me further what is purush and prakriti and then again chapter 15 and so we have to get familiar with these words now purush and prakriti the same like shiva and shakti you know yin and yang you can look at it whichever you want krishna and radha that's why they say it's one but then it get divided into two but the essence is one only because one cannot be without the other that's why it's like can you separate a dance from a dancer you know so you cannot so it, that's how it is but it sometime it manifests other time it merges back that's all it is krishna explains in this and the following stanza what all items together constitute the matter and those that constitute the spiritual entity within a living man once the individual comes to understand clearly the distinction between matter and spirit he will indeed come to understand that the spirit identifying with matter is the cause for all its suffering and when it is detached from its identifications it rediscovers for itself its own essential nature as perfection and bliss absolute the spirit identifying with matter and sharing the destinies of the inert equipment is called the ego jiva it is the ego that comes to rediscover itself to be nothing other than the spirit that presides over matter So what Swami Ji is trying to do over here is he's trying to point out 
that we are also made up of both. Because, you know, that's the main thing over here that, hey, what is it? Whatever is at the macrocosm, it's at microcosm too. So we, we have the spirit and, and the matter both. But our problem is we get too stuck up on the matter. <laughs> that's what he's reminding us. So by telling us what matter constitute, but there is something other than matter that is consciousness, that is a higher nature of God. That's what you are. And you are, you know, this is and living in all that, we are, that this separation, we have to do it in our own mind. You know, physically, we can't see that separation because we can't see the consciousness. It's a power behind it. So that's why he was saying, and then when you identify with the matter, then that's called the ego. So when they say, oh, you should get rid of your ego, as long as we are alive, we won't be able to get rid of it, but we can rise above it and know that it's a false thing. That's all. That's why they say transcend the ego, you know. In order to make Arjun realize how exactly one is to understand the true nature of the self in all its divine might and glory, Lord Krishna tries to enumerate the matter aspect as distinct from the spiritual truth in each individual. So it's just like telling you that the more we learn, it will be easier for us to separate it, basically. You know, that's what it is. Like, if you have to win over something, you have to understand it first, what it is. <laughs> you know, that's what it is. Hmm. The five great elements, mind, intellect, and ego, constitute, according to the Gita, the eightfold prakriti that has come to be superimposed upon the truth, through ignorance. Now, this one is a little difficult, but anyway, maybe read the whole paragraph. I'll try to explain. Yeah. Go ahead. The five great cosmic elements are represented in the microcosm by the five sense organs by which the individual comes to experience and live in the world of sense objects. Thus, the list making up Prakriti is nothing other than the subtle body and its vehicles of expression that are constituted of the sense organs. The sense organs are the channels through which the world of stimuli reaches within. And the inner point of focus of the five sense organs is called the mind. The impulses received by the mind are rationally classified and systematized into the knowledge of their perception by the intellect. At all these three levels of sense perception, mental reception, and intellectual assimilation, there is a continuous sense of I-ness, which is called the ego. These constitute the equipment through which, at the touch of life, man functions as the intelligent being that he is. Swamiji explained it very, very nicely, right? So, so we, we already discussed that the five great elements and our sense organs are directly manifestation of those. And how this whole world comes about that you know, <clears throat> these sense objects we perceive. And then he said that what is this ego is nothing but that all three levels of sense perception. And he went through systematically that, hey, the sense organs receive the information. It gives it to the mind. Data collection happens over there. Uh, and then the intellect makes the decision, right? That's why that's how we function in the world every day. But with, there is a continuous sense of I-ness because I am doing this and that's what is called ego. So he's just telling you that again, the macrocosm and microcosm, you know, how it, the whole world has come about. So even if you don't understand everything, if you understood a little bit, that's good at this stage. But I was just saying the first part of it, the five great elements, mind, intellect, and ego, so this Ashtada Prakriti, constitute according to the Gita, the eightfold Prakriti, that has come to be superimposed on the truth. That's the part maybe a little confusing because on one hand, they are calling it the marriage of two, you know, consciousness and matter, but the reality is it is actually just consciousness only. <laughs> it just, because of Maya, it appears like that to us. It's an ignorance. And Advait Vedanta, you know, it's the best example I can give is of the ocean. 
Are the waves different from the ocean? It's part of it. It's H2O only. It just looks to us. Koi bolega, oh, wave, you know, ocean mein to bahut halchal ho rahi hai. Kisi ne bola ki waan deep ja ke dekho. Ekdam shant milega. Kuch bhi ne halchal nahi hai. At that level, se koon si halchal? You know, just little wind come and it's fluttering a little bit. And for, to us, it looks like major waves and all that. Something like that over here that we separate it in our mind. We do all that. And we call it marriage, marriage, ye wo. Actually, it is just one only. It is our ignorance. That's what I was point out on. We have, we have studied the Vedanta. So just trying to bring that point over here. What Swami, Swamiji meant. But they have to use that language and they have to separate it so that we can understand it, go back to that oneness. That's why they are doing it. Any question, comment? Or anybody wants to add anything to this Ashtada Prakriti? Everybody became very sad. I, um, yeah. I think your dance and dancer example was very, very clear in understanding some part of this because the dance cannot exist without the dancer. Correct. But a dancer is not a dancer unless there is some dance, <laughs> yes. unless she can dance or he can dance. <laughs> Got I it. Yeah. That was a very good yeah. Um, yeah. explanation. Yeah. See, other, other example they give, which I like very much, and I can share it with you. They said that it's something like fire. Okay, When we say fire, fire has its uh, unmanifested form also. Like wood made with a fire, it's unmanifested, right? When dry wood is sitting there, but it manifest. Ho jati ho. And then what are the characteristics of the uh, you know, fire is heat and light. Fire means heat and light. That is his expression. And, and you can say that that is, uh, you know, power of, of the uh, fire, you can call it. So same way Brahman has its power and the power is the one that manifests it. And then the other way of looking at it, that when Brahman hoga, to uska power hoga hi hoga. It, uh, agar aag jalegi, to heat or light aegi aegi, right? So then when the Brahman decides, hey, I want to use my power, to wo maya manifest hogi hogi. <laughs> you know? That's why the world comes, come, because it's a nature of it. It's going to, can't just sit quietly. But it, it, it goes up and down. You know, like you said, that it will manifest and then merge back again. Like the dancer will dance for a while, then he will sit quietly. As though the dance has merged with him, right? Where did the dance go? It kind of, it is within him only. It can express any time. Yeah, so that was a good example. Yeah. Any question or comment? Other besides? But uh, after we discussed it and all that, now it, it is a little more clear, Miraji, when you, when you read it on your own, it was a little bit, you know, Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Okay, good. So, the, so you are explaining and um, reading it together, you know, with the whole class. It yeah, makes exactly. a big difference. I so, think. you know, this is this is just the tip of the iceberg about Bhagwan's nature. So, as we go deeper and deeper, uh, he will tell you more and more and more. But it's all related to this only. This is the foundation. The two different things, yeah. Okay, so what I can do, I can close Bhagavad Gita here since there are no more questions because it's better to go a little slow. I don't want to load up too much. You know, we can churn upon this and next week we will do what is the higher nature of God and together it will complete para and apara. Sarva dharman parityajya mami kam sharanam raja Aham twa sarva pape bhya moksha ishyami ma shuchaha Hari yom shri guru bhyo namaha Hari yom